Okay, hi everybody. Today we're going to talk a little bit about Evo Devo, which is evolutionary development. What is Evo Devo? It's a field that combines evolutionary and developmental biology. Um, many developmental genes have been conserved throughout history. Uh, the developmental genes that, for instance, would say put legs here, put wings here, the eyes go on the head. So these are the developmental genes that um, the pattern remains the same throughout history often. But when there's slight genetic differences in these genes, they can lead to large morphological changes and speciation events between organisms, um, especially when these changes are in genes that alter the timing, the rate, and the spatial growth pattern of the, um, of the feature. So for instance, the difference between a, uh, a whale flipper and a dog leg, we've looked at that in the past, they have the same bones, but one is adapted to a terrestrial lifestyle, the other is adapted to an aquatic lifestyle, and because of that, their uh, bone structure is very different, even though they're using the same bones in those limbs, the developmental pattern of those bones is quite different. Another example of that would be the, just the development of bone limbs in general that uh, a rose first uh, fish had fins, and then these developed into uh, boned limbs later on, and this allowed for the terrestrial lifestyle we see in the tetrapods. I just want to remind you that most mutations are actually deleterious if they have any effect at all. When they're just point mutations, they might code for the same proteins and have no effect. But most mutations are deleterious and end up getting weeded out of the populations. But every once in a while, a new mutation can lead to something advantageous and lead to a new adaptive feature that will help the organism in its environment. And oftentimes these mutations in genes that control development can play this huge role in um, evolution and make for some big macro, macro evolutionary events. Uh, Pedomorphosis is an example of that. So pedomorphosis is defined as the retention of juvenile features in the adult. One example of pedomorphosis, um, it comes, for example, it comes, I mean, uh, I'd like to say it comes from the, the Greek language. Uh, pedos means child, morphosis means shaping. Um, one example of pedomorphosis is humans as compared to chimpanzees. So um, on the following slide, we're going to look at the developmental differences between these two organisms. Um, adult chimps have large jaws and very strong, large and very strong jaws and a smaller brain case, whereas adult humans have a rather weak jaw, but a very large brain case. Um, the humans look much more similar to an infant in both a chimpanzee and a human infant than do the chimpanzees. They change much more between their uh, fetal appearance of the skull and the adult appearance of the skull. So let's look at that. Uh, you can see here on this picture, we have a comparison between the chimpanzee fetus and the human fetus. Very, very similar. Um, not much differences between them. But then as the chimpanzee grows into the adult chimpanzee, what happens is you get this very strong jaw that starts to develop and the muscles for that jaw actually constrict the development of the brain case. There's a large ridge across the top of the chimpanzee skull and on this ridge attaches the muscles that make this jaw very strong. Uh, but this ridge constricts the growth of the brain case, so it doesn't continue to grow as it does in humans. But we've given up that strong jaw in preference for um, a large brain case. So our brain is not constricted in its growth by this jaw. So we end up with a smaller, weaker jaw, but a still developing large brain case. Another example of pedomorphosis is seen in the salamander axolotl. It's a fun example to use just because it's fun to say axolotl. Um, 
these are salamanders, and this is an adult axolotl here shown on the slide, and you can see that he has external gills. So this is a feature that you often see in larval stages of salamanders, but is very uncommon in the adults. And so this is, again, pedomorphosis, a retention of juvenile traits in the adult. Another example that I want to show, um, this is um, natural selection in action. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about the stickleback. So this is an evolutionary event that took place very rapidly in the space of 12,000 years. Um, the ocean stickleback is a fish. It's not a very large fish. It has this pelvic spine on the bottom. Uh, this pelvic spine, when another larger fish tries to swallow it, it sticks this spine out and often the larger fish will regurgitate it because it's hard to swallow something with a big toothpick sticking out of it. Um, now they got separated, a, a group of these fish got separated from the ocean uh, into a freshwater environment and they got enclosed in this lake due to some geologic processes. Uh, these lake st sticklebacks were in the presence of a very different type of predator than the ocean sticklebacks were. So ocean sticklebacks were mostly predated by larger fish. The lake stickleback, however, it faced uh, predation from dragonfly larva. So having this little pelvic fin that would jut out enabled the dragonfly larva to actually grab onto that and then eat them like a popsicle. Uh, dragonfly larvae are voracious predators and they'll eat things that are even larger than themselves as long as they can get a hold of them. And so what was um, actually a beneficial adaptation in the ocean became a um, liability in the lake environment. And so this is a picture here of a dragonfly larva and uh, this this development, this loss of the of the pelvic spine on the sticklebacks happened over just some 12,000 years, which is a very rapid event in evolutionary history. Uh, and this is a direct result of the differences in the predators between the freshwater environment and the ocean environment. So this is just a really good example of how a developmental gene a little mutation in a developmental gene can lead to a great adaptation in a species. Thank you.